This lecture discusses the carbon and methane cycles. Carbon is both the foundation of all life on Earth and the source of most energy consumed by human civilization. So carbon is actually the fourth most abundant element in the uh, universe, and it's forged in the heart of aging stars. Um, most of Earth's carbon, there's about estimated 65 trillion tonnes, is stored in rocks where it's relatively uh, non-reactive. And the rest is stored in reservoirs in the ocean, in the atmosphere, plants, soil and in fossil fuels as well. Um, so carbon flows between each of these reservoirs in an exchange called the carbon cycle. And the carbon cycle has slow components. Um, which take place over millennia and, and, and over even longer time periods. Uh, and it has fast components. And this chart here uh, is a diagram of the fast carbon cycle, which shows the movement of carbon between land, atmosphere and oceans um, over the sort of the, the, the time periods that the humans uh, live. So um, any change in the cycle in the long or short cycle, shifts carbon out of one reservoir and puts more carbon into other reservoirs. So there's there's a, a natural balancing cycle and any shift in that cycle will, will, will change where carbon is stored. Um, changes that put carbon gases into the atmosphere uh, cause the greenhouse effect. So this diagram is the fast carbon cycle. It shows the movement of carbon between land, atmosphere and oceans. So yellow numbers are natural fluxes. Uh, for example, here we have photosynthesis, which um, extracts carbon from the atmosphere. So CO2 is in the atmosphere uh, at, at uh, certain concentrations and, and photosynthesis uh, extracts that and puts it into plant biomass into another reservoir. Plant biomass then stores um, uh, carbon into into the soil. Uh, and over very very long um, uh, the carbon cycle, uh, different uh, biomass gets stored as as fossil carbon. And then here the amount ten thousand there indicates um, the 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 total amount in I think trillions of tons. Um, here there's also an ocean carbon cycle where there's an exchange of CO2 between the air and of the sea and then there's there's a some um depositing of carbon into the ocean um into sediments in the ocean so over the long term the carbon cycle seems to maintain this balance that prevents all of the earth's carbon from either entering uh, the atmosphere which is the what it does in venus uh, so in, in venus that the carbon cycle sort of uh, uh, ends in the very high levels of co2 in the atmosphere uh, or from being stored entirely in rocks carbonated rocks. And this balance helps to keep Earth's temperature relatively stable, like a thermostat, uh, causing the greenhouse uh, because of the, the, the greenhouse effect. That thermostat works over a few hundreds of thousands of years as part of that slow thermal cycle. Um, and for short time periods, tens to hundreds of thousands of years, the temperature of the Earth can vary like this. And in fact, the Earth does swing between ice ages and warmer interglacial periods on these time scales. Um, parts of the carbon cycle can amplify these short term temperature changes. So a restatement of what the greenhouse effect is, is a uh, imbalance in the short term carbon cycle, uh, because since the Industrial Revolution, human activity has modified this carbon cycle by changing its component functions, uh, which is releasing the uh, geological reservoirs of carbon in the form of fossil fuels and releasing it to the atmosphere. And the carbon cycle doesn't balance that out by removing it by uh, by increased, uh, you know, um, by by uh, extracting carbon from the atmosphere in either the ocean or in, in land use. In some ways it does, there is actually slightly more photosynthesis and more acidification of the oceans, which does remove some of that CO2 from the atmosphere, um, but, but um, to not an extent at all. And in the last lecture we saw, as a result, the concentrations of CO2 um, in the atmosphere are increasing. The rest of the increase is also caused by land use changes, particularly deforestation. So when we change the balance in um, land reservoirs in the soil and in the biomass reservoirs, that also increases the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere. The other important greenhouse gas is methane. Um, and where does methane come from? So it's a Im very important contributor to global warming and it has diverse sources. About 40% in the atmosphere uh, of methane released to the atmosphere comes from natural sources, for example, wetlands. It comes from... Um, 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 uh, anaerobic digestion of, of, of things. So 40% come from natural sources like wetlands, about a quarter come from agriculture and 20% come from fossil fuels. Um, fossil fuels they, there, for example, when we um, extract 
natural gas from uh, reservoirs, uh, because natural gas, as I said, is exactly the same as uh, as methane. And when some of that escapes, uh, you know, there's uh, there isn't flaring or there's 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 leaks in the pipes that is released to the atmosphere in the form of of methane. Uh, all this then animal waste, animal digestion is a significant source of global. Um, so agriculture is a, is a very important source, and then. Um, biomass burning wetlands and so on also have um have a very significant source of methane then there are sinks of, of methane as well so the methane is actually also part part of of a cycle so what we call biogenic methane is methane that comes from um from human source from from, from the bio cycle that's not a methane that comes from uh from fossil fuels so biogenic methane uh, is also part of a cycle um as you see here uh, there's co2 in the atmosphere and photosynthesis um, creates that, uh, puts that into carbon in the form of cellulose and carbohydrates in plants. And that's consumed by animals like cows, we know that well in Ireland. Um, and the carbon, uh, the carbon that is consumed by the cows goes into their belly and gets transformed into um, methane, CH4. And that's, um, that's emitted in, uh, as belches, burps, and and uh, and in cow manure and farts as well, so that uh, that methane is is released to the atmosphere as CH four. But then uh, over about twelve years, uh, there's a process by which uh, methane is converted into carbon dioxide. So um, so the this is very important for the difference in impact of fossil fuels and agriculture, which is a, a very significant debate in Ireland. Um, right now, because we have such a high proportion of our greenhouse gases come from agriculture. Um, so while CH4 does break down into CO2 after about 12 years or so, uh, this is part of this natural cycle. So it doesn't add any CO2 to the atmosphere. So the, the, the grass would have broken down um, and, and, uh, and, and so on. What is very important is that CH4 is a very potent greenhouse gas and it has a much stronger warming impact than carbon dioxide. And this is where the trends in methane related to CO2 matter very much. And this chart shows the atmospheric concentration of methane that we can observe. And as you can see, it's rising very quickly. And this is as a result of increases in the intensity of agriculture, in um, increases in releases from uh, fossil fuels and so on. Um, there was this leveling off in the mid 2000s and it wasn't, it's still not fully understood why that was, um, followed by a sharp rise from, from about 2007 onwards. Some reasons why people speculate that is, is because potentially um, increased livestock in the world, um, more uh, fracking, which is an extraction of natural gas from rocks, which can cause methane leakage. Um, potentially it could have been natural fires and wetland emissions, indicating some tipping points, um, or natural source, natural sinks uh, are, uh, of, um, of methane are disappearing. But whatever the case, we know that methane concentrations are rising, and that's very important because the warming impact from methane is much more related to the trend rather than the absolute um, uh, kind of con uh, uh, um, the absolute um, concentration over time. And this is where the difference between CO2 and CH4 between carbon dioxide and methane becomes very, very difficult. So we know from uh, ice core data, so there's there's air bubbles trapped in uh, glaciers, which uh, give us basically a, a record of the Earth's uh, historical temperature record. We know that methane concentrations in the atmosphere have um, tripled in response to increasing activity um, because of because of human activity. Um, but this gives you a sense of what the warming profile is uh, of, of methane. Basically, if you emit one ton, uh, basically the, the temperature effect of one year's global emissions of methane, if you know this year's emissions of methane has this effect on global temperature over the next 10 years, but then this year's methane won't have an impact on um, the temperature over 100 years. Some of the heat is stored in the oceans, it's not zero, but mainly the warming effect of the methane that we emit now will not have an effect over the next hundred years. On the other hand, the warming impact from CO2 that we emit now, it's not so strong because the, the warming potential of CO2 is not as, as great as methane, but it lasts much longer. So the total absolute sort of um, the, the, the warming impact over the next hundred years, you should be taking the area under the chart rather than the absolute level 
at any one point. So you can see there that even though um, even though CO2 has, uh, has has less of a warming impact, you know, in, in the short term, it lasts for much longer. So so it's 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 uh, it's, it's extremely significant. And this explains a bit how temperature responds differently to cumulative CO2, uh, to cumulative um, pollutants, which is CO2, and short-lived pollutants, which is mainly CH4. Um, so surface temperature responds differently to carbon dioxide and methane um, because CO2 accumulates in the climate system, while methane is broken down by natural processes. And carb uh, CH4, methane has higher warming impact than CO2, but the warming effect doesn't last. Therefore, the warming from CO2 is related to cumulative emissions and temperatures will keep rising until emissions from CO2 go to zero. And these three charts should illustrate what I mean by this. So the first chart here shows um, just an illustration of if CO2 emissions rise and methane rise, the warming impact from CO2, it's cumulative over time. So therefore the warming impact is exponential, but the warming impact from uh, methane is related to the more related to the annual emissions, so it would rise um, just linearly. If we made uh, emissions of CO two and CH four constant over time, so if we said, okay, let's just flatten, you know, some people think uh, let's just keep global CO two levels at the same level, warming from CO two will keep rising even if um, if even if absolute emissions are flat. But uh, if you keep methane emissions steady then the warming impact is steady as well. So if, let's say methane has already caused one and a half degrees of increase in, in global temperature. I'm not saying that that is, I'm not sure what, what that number is, but the basically the global temperature effect won't increase. And what where it really makes a difference is when we're talking about falling emissions. So let's say we really go for it, we bring global CO2 emissions to zero, we bring CH4 emissions to zero. What will happen? CO2 emissions, the heating from the warming from CO2 emissions will continue to rise until um, until it reaches uh, zero. So you can see here that basically the, the global temperature rise from CO2 will keep increasing until we no longer emit any uh, any net CO2. Whereas the opposite is the case for for methane. If we fall our if we reduce our methane emissions, then the warming impact will actually decrease so we can reverse our historical warming uh, as a result of CH4. And that's why the warming if effect is very, very sensitive for the trend in methane emissions, but not so much for CO2. Now I want to quickly relate that to where GHG trends are in Ireland overall. So um, in the last lecture, I talked about the global warming potential and how we compare different uh, greenhouse gases in Ireland and internationally, the global sort of standard for comparing the different um, warming potentials of different gases is using GWP 100. So that's the warming impact over 100 years of, of a gas. Um, and, and methane is about 28 tonnes of CO2 when measured in that way. So uh, in Ireland, we emit about 60 million tonnes of CO2 equivalent. So that's equiv equivocating the other um, greenhouse gases to CO2. Um, but two thirds of that is, um, is CO2, and that all comes from burning fossil fuels, or the vast majority comes from burning fossil fuels. Whereas about 14 million tonnes comes from methane, and the vast majority of that is from agriculture, and uh, nitrous oxide there uh, comes from agriculture as well. And what I really wanted to show you is the uh, methane trends in Ireland. Um, as I said, we're emitting about 14 million tonnes of, uh, of, of CO2 equivalent um, from agriculture, and that comes from dairy, from beef uh, extraction. But from 2012, that has risen by about 3 million tonnes, according to the EPA. And that, even though it's a very slightly warming, uh, slightly growing increase in methane, the warming impact of that increase is very, very, very significant. So if you hear people say, well, methane only lasts in the atmosphere for 10 years, that argument only um, is valid if methane emissions are flat or falling. So basically, uh, if while methane emissions are rising, Ireland's warming impact is, is, is very substantially uh, increasing as well.